Virtual care and telemedicine were already trending in healthcare even before the pandemic. But now, in this post-COVID world, nearly half of all medical practices have either implemented some form of telehealth or are considering doing so in the months ahead. So, how do you add virtual care to your malpractice coverage? How do you ensure that you're covered for this new type of medicine? We've got answers for you in today's episode. Stay tuned. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. All right, let's jump in. Telemedicine allows physicians to provide care from a distance. Patients can see a doctor for diagnosis and treatment without having to wait for an appointment, and they can consult with a physician from the comfort of their own home. Hospitals and medical groups can also contract with telemedicine companies to outsource cases and provide round-the-clock staffing for critical work, such as teleradiology and other specialties. Today, healthcare providers see telehealth as an opportunity to not only provide more convenient care to their patients, but also to grow their practices. So, how do you make sure that you're covered for virtual care with your malpractice insurance? Well, first, you need to decide if you're going to be doing virtual care in the state that you currently work in, or if you want to expand to other states. For some doctors, they simply want to be able to treat their existing patients remotely, whether it's for follow-up visits, routine checkups, or any number of other services. If your patients physically reside in the same state that you're in and where you're licensed, then your current malpractice insurance is probably sufficient. Talk to your agent about your plans to add virtual care for existing patients, and they'll talk to the underwriter at the insurance company to ensure that your current policy will apply. If, however, you want to add virtual care outside the state where you currently practice, then you may need to consider some other options. Start off by talking to your malpractice insurance agent to see if your current carrier can cover you in the places where you want to work. Some malpractice insurance companies are state-specific, meaning they can only cover you in that state. Some companies are regional, which would provide you with coverage across a larger regional territory. And some carriers have national reach, which would provide you with the largest footprint and the ability to work anywhere in the United States. If you are insured with a national insurance company, they should be able to add this coverage for you without an issue. Keep in mind, however, that your rate may change, since policy types and limits may be different in other states. And some carriers may be more competitive in one state than another. If you find that your rate will be increasing significantly because of these state changes, ask your agent if you should shop around to compare other coverage options with different carriers. During these conversations with your agent, you may find that your current insurance carrier doesn't offer coverage in the states where you want to work. If that's the case, you have two options. Option one, you can keep your current insurance and just get a supplemental policy to cover the virtual care work that you do outside the state. Or option number two, you can switch everything to a new company that can cover it all. I actually think this is the perfect time for you to do a full market assessment, so don't hesitate in asking an agent to go to market for you. Adding virtual care to your practice gives you the opportunity to take a fresh look at all of the available malpractice choices so that you can set yourself up for long-term success. Be sure to talk to your agent about any nuances or noteworthy items regarding the new states that you'll be working in, such as what level of coverage is appropriate in the new state, can you maintain the same policy type, and what happens if you leave that state in the future. It's important for you to know what malpractice limits are appropriate to carry in each state. Some states have patient compensation funds or other programs that require specific enrollment, and their limit structures are slightly different. 
For example, if you're a radiologist in Ohio and you're going to start doing reads for a facility in Indiana, you'll want to enroll in the Indiana Patient Compensation Fund to ensure that you're protected under the malpractice cap in the event that you're involved in a claim with an Indiana-based patient. When considering the type of malpractice insurance that's right for your new virtual care work, be cognizant of tail insurance or other hidden costs that might affect you. As you start and stop contracts in various parts of the country, your malpractice insurance can be impacted in different ways. Here's an example. Let's say we have a radiologist that physically resides in Dallas, Texas. He has contracts with four facilities, one in Grand Rapids, one in Omaha, Nebraska, one in Salt Lake City, Utah, and one in Miami, Florida. Plus, he does some cases locally in Dallas. When the carrier prices the malpractice coverage for this radiologist, they'll look at the premiums for each of these areas. Let's say the price for radiology coverage in Dallas is $16,000. Grand Rapids is $15,000. Omaha is $10,000. Salt Lake City is $12,000. And Miami is $30,000. The underwriter will then look at the percent of practice in each location. So let's say our doctor is spending 10% of his time in Dallas, 10% in Grand Rapids, 20% in Omaha, 25% in Salt Lake City, and 35% in Miami. To come up with the price, the underwriter is going to blend the premiums based on the rate and the percent of practice to come up with a total. Then they'll issue one policy to our radiologist for coverage in all five areas. Let's assume the price for that is $30,000. If the radiologist adds or removes locations, the underwriter will adjust the pricing accordingly. But if the radiologist has a claims made policy, there may be instances when the risk changes so significantly that the underwriter requests him to buy tail. If, for example, our doctor stops working in Miami completely, the underwriter might make him buy tail insurance to close out that exposure. Occurrence coverage, although more expensive, is often a good solution for telemedicine policies since it provides more flexibility and no tail insurance. If our radiologist would have had occurrence coverage, he could add or remove locations with no worry of tail insurance. So keep this in mind as you talk to your agent about the states that you want to work in and then plan accordingly. Adding virtual care to your malpractice insurance is a routine request, but it's important that you work with a knowledgeable agent to make sure it's done correctly. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link in the description box below where you can connect with us via phone, email, or chat today. And if you're listening, please visit us online at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. By the way, we have our new link that's now live on our website where you can submit your questions to our mailbag for me to answer on air. We'll drop a link in the show notes for you so that you can submit your inquiries. Who knows? Your question could be featured on our next show. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to give us a like and leave a review. Your feedback and support really does help us to reach more people. And we're so grateful for your clicks and your kind words. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks for joining us.